So my name is Brian Stinson. I work on the community platform engineering team at Red Hat. Um, uh, typically, the uh, the thing I spend my day job on is um, working on CentOS Stream, which I'm here to talk to us a little bit about today. Um, for the most part, I, I kind of want to want us to think a little bit about what happens uh, what happened before. CentOS Stream kind of came on the stage. And uh, you may have heard one or two things about CentOS Stream before. And so I want us to kind of go back maybe, um, you know, think think about a year ago about how the relationship worked between uh, Fedora, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and uh, CentOS Linux. And it looked something probably like this. Um, and sorry about those little transitions there. Uh, when you think about what, what Red Hat is doing to build Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you know, we always thought of Fedora as the upstream, um, you know, with uh, the, the individual projects even further upstream. Uh, so we gather everything up into Fedora, package it together, and uh, at, at certain points during the life cycle there, uh, Red Hat takes the content from Fedora and turns it into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then down the, uh, down the road, we would do um, uh, CentOS Linux, which was built from the same sources as RHEL. Uh, and the, uh, if you think of this in terms of, um, of interactions and code flows and things like that, there's a whole lot of arrows going around, right? Um, sometimes RHEL takes things from Fedora. Uh, sometimes we found things out in the, um, in the CentOS Linux space that uh, people wanted to make changes, fix bugs, uh, things like that. And so there's, we've got these arrows kind of going around everywhere. Um, we found a, 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 a kind of a few uh, things that are interesting related to that. Mostly that this feedback loop of, um, you know, Fedora, RHEL, CentOS, and then back and forth and back and forth, that loop ended up becoming um, kind of long. Uh, people who were using CentOS Linux would uh, they were only able to affect things after a RHEL release is already done and baked and, and sent out. Um, and then there's also the, the fact that a lot of, uh, a, a lot of RHEL development happens, uh, you know, inside of Red Hat. And that's, uh, uh, something that we wanted to, to kind of take a look at a little bit. And so I want to take, um, uh, talk a little bit about some of the goals for, uh, the the CentOS Stream project and CentOS Stream was announced um, you know a while ago. Now we're we're kind of in the middle of uh, the bootstrap phase here, which we'll we'll talk about in just a little bit. But uh, some of the the higher level goals that we're talking about, um, uh, I just want to kind of go through some of those real quick. Uh, the first one is transparent development of the next RHEL minor release. And so, what does that mean? If you think of where we are in the ter in terms of the um, the life cycle right now, uh, you may have noticed that Red Hat Enterprise Linux just released the beta for 8.3, um, and we we think that CentOS Stream uh, is probably going to uh, be a vehicle for where folks can actually get a preview of what's going into the next minor release of RHEL, so 8.3 and you know soon to be 8.4 things like that. Uh, before it actually comes out. And we want that to be, uh, we want that for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, transparency is important to us and feeding into the development of the next RHEL minor release is, um, it's just important to get feedback as early as possible. So if you go back, um, you know, a couple of slides ago where we had all those arrows floating around, uh, we want people on the, uh, who are actually consuming Enterprise Linux to be able to affect things on a reasonable time scale. Um, the one of the goals that, um, or one of the ways that we actually make the transparent development uh, of the next RHEL minor release happen is uh, we want to collaborate directly with RHEL maintainers. And I know we're we're used to um, uh, to doing that in Fedora a little bit. Uh, RHEL maintainers participate actively in. Uh, both in Fedora and then uh, developers are, are are also pretty active there in Fedora and in the upstreams uh, of everything that makes um, uh, makes it into our releases. But this is another point where uh, we found a, um, a kind of a space that we needed to fill 
with a distribution that's focused on that RHEL minor release and pulling everyone together so that you can collaborate directly with maintainers working on uh, the minor releases is, was really important. And then as part of the, uh, the CentOS project in general, uh, CentOS Stream gives us some, uh, some interesting things. Um, uh, it gives us some uh, layers of experimentation is what I call it. Um, if you're familiar with the special interest group process in CentOS, right now uh, we have folks like, um, like RDO, the, the OpenStack folks, who are building their content on top of the community build system and, and some other things. This lets us do some interesting things because if we have a preview of the next minor release, folks like RDO, um, even some of the, uh, the other upstream projects can come uh, and build on top of, um, uh, of Sandhaw Stream and then get a preview of what, you know, what's going to come out next. And so they, they know, uh, they have a pretty good indication of what's going to come out uh, for the, the future minor releases. But one thing that we're, we're considering too is expanding the idea of a SIG um, to, uh, to kind of take some of the, uh, the exploratory contributions uh, as we kind of feed into this process. So CentOS Stream is, is very narrowly focused on uh, you know, feeding into the RHEL development process, but we wanna take that content and uh, allow some other places for people to do other bits of experimentation on enterprise Linux when maybe Fedora has actually you know, moved on to, um, uh, to looking further in the future. And so if we have all these goals pulled together, um, you know, with, uh, uh, with CentOS Stream focused on a, uh, a minor release and you know, we, we do the same uh, thing that we're used to about bringing up a real major release in Fedora, the overall, and, and I know this is, um, this is gonna be kind of simple. And uh, so I, I want you to know that we, you know, we, this is very uh, simplified diagram, but this is what we're thinking here. Moving CentOS over here in the middle so that it, um, it, it sits kind of in the middle of, uh, you know, what the Fedora lifecycle is and what feeds into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This is kind of the, um, like a really, a cartoonish picture of what we would like to see. And it puts things kind of in a better place uh, so that we all have a, a viewpoint of what's coming next with RHEL. And I wanna talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing right now, uh, because again, we're, we're in the middle of the bring up phase with CentOS Stream. And so we're not, uh, we're working towards that ideal picture that we just showed uh, just a minute ago. Um, we're in the middle of the bring up phase, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of our constraints that we have, uh, because this is, you know, moving, uh, moving CentOS stream sort of towards the middle to where it's upstream of the next minor version of RHEL, that sort of thing. That's a big, uh, that's a big shift in both mindset and then also process, right? There's a lot of stuff that happens when RHEL developers do their day-to-day -day work. Um, you know, they, they pull stuff directly from upstream and, and rebase packages. They pull stuff from uh, Fedora and, you know, backport things into, into RHEL. And we didn't really want to um, upset the, uh, you know, a lot of the internal processes that they go through on a day-to-day -day basis while we're in the middle of building the infrastructure to make this happen. And so that's why I say, you know, there's some caveats here about being in the middle of the bring-up phase and, you um, We'll talk a little bit about uh, how the sources flow. I'm gonna take an individual package and we'll just kind of walk through uh, what it looks like um, here real quick. So let's say you wanted to uh, affect something in the mutter package. Uh, this uh, screenshot here is git.centos.org and you can see a number of different branches. Um, if you've paid attention to the CentOS ecosystem before, you kind of know how this works. Uh, the C7 branch, uh, all of that stuff is content that makes it into CentOS Linux 7. Uh, same thing for C8. Those are sources that come directly from Red Hat after a release happens. So they push to that branch, it gets rebuilt into CentOS Linux and then um, uh, shift it out that way. I don't want to focus too much on those because, again, this is for uh, for stream purposes. If you look down at the very bottom of that branch list, there's a C8S branch. 
that's where uh, the content, uh, it, th that's where we basically build the content for each and every package that comes in. And to kind of lift the covers on, on how that process happens a little bit, um, we're still doing a little bit of, of work to actually take sources from internal to Red Hat and pull them back out into the public so that we can uh, give that preview and stuff. Um, I'll talk a minute about what's, uh, uh, about how we expect to, to address that a little bit, but, um, but yeah, for now, the C8S branch, you can consider that at this point in time, August 7th, 2020, uh, the C8S branch points at um, what we think is probably going to make it into uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.3. And so if you want to make a change, um, you can you know, interact with these sources in here, um, see what's going on on each of the branches. And I know uh, I see Carl George here in chat. He's our uh, our steward of uh, of some of these patches here, so uh, he'd be a good person to uh, to double check with uh, about how to how to make all this happen. But um, there is a a version in Red Hat Bugzilla uh, called CentOS Stream, and that's the uh, that's sort of the touch point for where we actually bring patches into the company and uh, get them in front of the, the RHEL maintainers and stuff. So, you know, there's there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can uh, do patches directly against git.centos.org and then we'll, um, uh, I'm volunteering Carl to, uh, to kind of help uh, manage some of that process because he's already volunteered. But um, the the idea is we, we attach a patch to a bugzilla and then it makes it through the normal RHEL process that happens today. And I promise I won't bore you with all of those details because you um, uh, that would be a, a few talks in and of itself. But um, uh, attaching things to a bugzilla gets it on the rel maintainer's radar, and they do the things that they do in order to get a rel build um, internally. So internally, there's a, a rel build of Mutter, and then we pick it up from one of the nightlies. And the way that we do that as you can see, this is a list of the commits that um, uh, that we have for this package. Uh, and you can see that there's the 3.32.2-46 is the one that we pushed in. Um, so this made it into a, a, a rel nightly compose at some point. And then we pulled those sources into git.centos.org to get them uh, going for stream. And then um, we can see what the build looks like here. You can see that Carl did this uh, this build for us and tagged it in for uh, a compose. And then it shows up on the mirrors. So this is mirror.centos.org uh, slash centos slash uh, eight dash stream. And you can see that there's the, the regular repository layout. I could have dug in here and showed you the, uh, the actual um, package, but uh, you'll just have to trust me that it's uh, it, it's all in there. Um, our aim is uh, to actually make this process uh, transparent. You know, we're, we're working on a lot of automation to bring these sources from internal to external while we're in the middle of, um, of the eight life cycle and stuff. Uh, but we're also looking to get this out as, as quickly as possible. And the last I heard, um, we have all of the sources pushed from last night's nightly. Um, we're you know catching up on builds because that that typically takes a while, but you'll see that um, that stuff reflected uh, fairly quickly out on mirror.centos.org that you can install on your machine today and um, and, and try all of this out. So this is how we're making it happen today. Uh, what's coming up next? Um, there's a few things, and again, while we're in the boots or in this uh, in this bring up process, there's a uh, a little bit of work for us to do just as a team to to keep things to things going. Uh, I mentioned that uh, you know we're pulling the sources internally. Uh, we're doing our best to keep ahead and make sure that we push the content both on a source level, but also on a binary level on a regular basis, so that we have a steady stream, uh, no pun intended, of content that comes uh, to your workstation as you um, as you do updates and, and things like that. Um, we want to start building SIGs. And 
we've got some pretty well established ones that are building against CentOS Linux. And we're going to start with some of those to kind of transition over to, uh, you know, doing regular builds against CentOS Stream. And we think that's going to help quite a bit with, um, you know, both catching things as they come in, but also allowing us and the SIGs and Red Hat and the different maintainers to all have a conversation together about what does uh, what does enterprise Linux look like uh, as we go over the the phases of eight um, of, of rel eight, and that's um, those are important conversations to have, and it's why we call CentOS Stream the shared space because you know it's uh, CentOS Stream is meant to be uh, kind of directed by Red Hat and by the maintainers. You know those people are meant to be in charge of uh, of what happens here, but it's a place for us all to get together and to talk about. Uh, bugs, features, anything that we want to see, uh, you know, as we uh, head on towards uh, future versions of, of RHEL. And so we want to exit the bring up phase. Uh, you know, this is not our, um, this is not the end state for what we want to see out of stream, because uh, to be honest, the, the whole uh, pulling internal sources and bringing them external and then building them and then releasing to them to the mirrors and you know all that stuff that's a little bit awkward to to meet our goal uh, if you go back to that um, that kind of cartoon picture of uh, with CentOS in the middle we want to get out of this bring up phase and um, and see what that means in order to be a true upstream of the next minor release of rel and what is, uh, so what does that mean? It means we need to settle in uh, into our space, uh, taking you know regular handoffs with ELN. Um, so ELN is meant meant to be the uh, uh, sort of the proving ground for uh, building Fedora Rawhide with an enterprise build root, and uh, you know talking about some of the things that that means. And I think there's a, a good talk on Sunday. Uh, from Stephen Gallagher about how ELN fits in this picture, but we think that uh, that these will have uh, these will be controlling venues for different parts of um, the enterprise Linux space. And so ELN is very active during the bootstrap phase of a major version. CentOS Stream is active. Uh, during the bring up phase for each minor version, and you know we all interact together with uh, with Red Hat. Ultimately, we want the rel maintainers to take over, uh, you know, both in terms of um, of dealing with content uh, that comes in from pull requests or uh, changes that you want to make as the community. We want them to. Uh, to be active in that process and making sure that they have the tools and everything that they need in order to make that happen. And uh, we've got you know plenty of infrastructure to bring up in order to, uh, to help them with that. But uh, this is the ultimate goal is rel maintainers, you know, when you interact on a package for CentOS stream, you're interacting with the rel maintainers. And so I want to end up with a, a few of the different uh, spaces that you can come and talk to us right now. Uh, first of all, if you want to download and, uh, and try CentOS Stream, it's available for you right now. We've got install media. Um, I think the uh, we need to respin some cloud images soon so that you, um, you have that sort of thing. But uh, you can head to the download page. There's a, a link to the ISOs and, and things like that. Um, we've got an IRC channel, yeah, hash CentOS Stream on Freenode. And if you hit up the CentOS develop mailing list, we're, we're happy to take um, the uh, uh, some questions there. And then there's some uh, documentation and FAQs out on the wiki for that. So I ended up a little bit early um, in order to take some questions from the chat if we have them. Uh, and I'm just scrolling through. So if we have questions here, I am happy to look at them. Otherwise, we can end this up and there we go. We have a good question. How much of Stream is still based on CentOS Linux 
and how long until it's self-sufficient? Uh, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, talking about this in, in terms of how we brought CentOS Stream up in the first place, um, we, we kind of uh, pulled together CentOS Linux and uh, uh, in order to uh, kind of bootstrap a lot of the, uh, the package content. In terms of content, CentOS Stream is um, is well independent of the content that's in CentOS Linux. I think we're down to um, you know basically finding out pieces of the branding and uh, you know notifying the the user of the fact that you know this is indeed uh, uh, CentOS Stream instead of CentOS Linux. And so there's a lot of uh, tiny details now, but in terms of content, the uh, the two distributions are uh, are produced separately. Uh, let's see, are there container images available for stream? Uh, currently we are not producing container images, um, but we are uh, respinning the install media uh, on a regular basis. So we're shooting for at least once a week. Uh, and then the, uh, the same thing with the cloud images. Those are a little bit further behind, but uh, the idea is um, that uh, we wanna get those on a regular basis as well. I don't see any more questions here. So I'm gonna wrap it up and thank you all for, uh, for attending the talk.